All right, once you've decided on your warm bin, you're gonna need to know how many worms to buy. We're gonna cover that on today's short episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. If you found this video, you might be starting on your vermicomposting journey, so congratulations. Using worms to turn your food scraps or household waste into an awesome soil amendment is an awesome endeavor. And I created this business and this YouTube channel to help you out along the way. So do me a favor, please hit like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little alert bell to be notified anytime we release a new video. All right, so you've got a new worm farm and you're wondering how many worms you need to buy. You can arrive at this number a few different ways, but the easiest way is to base your worm purchase on the amount of surface area you have available for vermicomposting. Unlike composting, which relies on volume, vermicomposting relies on surface area because composting worms tend to stay near the top of their habitats. So the surface area of your worm bin is what matters, and that should dictate the amount of worms that you need to buy. So I failed high school algebra, but even I can calculate surface area. It's really easy for a rectangle or a square, which is what we'll need for a Rubbermaid bin, a stackable system, or an urban worm bag. It's even pretty easy for a five gallon bucket. So here we go. For a rectangular or square worm bin, you need to multiply the length times the width. And let's stick to inches here for this one. For a standard 10 or 18 gallon Rubbermaid bin, you're looking at 18 by 12 inches. You multiply these two numbers together and you get 216 square inches. There are 144 square inches in a square foot, so we'll take our number and divide by 144 to find the square feet, which is 1.5 square feet. For a round worm bin, you're going to find the diameter in inches, or you can just measure half that, which is the radius. We're going to multiply the radius times pi, which is approximately 3.14 to find the area in inches. Again, divide that number by 144 inches to find the square feet. I'll just save you some work here. A five gallon bucket is about 12 inches wide, which is a six inch radius, which works out to 0.75 square feet. So now that we've got square feet, we can decide how many worms we need. My rule of thumb is to start a new worm bin with one half to one pound per square foot of vermicomposting area. Worms are gonna grow out to a density of anywhere from three to four pounds per square foot or more. So while you could start with a high density, a new worm bin won't have a mature ecosystem with a robust population of bacteria, broken down matter, and all the good stuff that worms like. So in the event that you end up failing at your first attempt at vermicomposting, and I failed twice before I got it right, it's less costly if you get it wrong. So what's a recommended amount for some common worm bins? Well, here we go. A Rubbermaid bin, you're gonna want about one to two pounds. A mortar tray, about one pound. A five gallon bucket, about a half pound. A stackable tray system like the Worm Factory 360, you want about one pound. For the Urban Worm Bag, and you can find a discounted link to that in the video description one to two pounds, and the hungry bin is also about one to two pounds that you want to start with. So here are a few other questions you might have. Some worm sellers sell by count rather than weight. So if you're buying the most common composting worm, which is a red wiggler, you're looking at around 800 to 1,000 worms per pound. For European nightcrawlers, they run about 500 to 600 worms per pound. And African nightcrawlers are likely around 200 to 300 worms a pound. Now you may have noticed that this urban worm bag has a surface area of four square feet. So why am I recommending people only buy one to two pounds? Well, the urban worm bag and the hungry bin for that matter, gets narrow or near the bottom. So a less than full urban worm bag or a hungry bin is not really gonna have a surface area of four feet like it is at the top. It's gonna be more like two and a half to three square feet. So we're gonna start you off with less because that worm bin is gonna be narrower again towards the bottom. All right, you may be wondering, do I need to worry about worms overpopulating themselves in the bin? You're not. Worms are excellent self-regulators, and when they sense that conditions aren't conducive to an increasing population, they're going to slow down their own reproduction on their own. There's no need to worry about worms outgrowing their worm bins. Okay, gang, I've been doing vermicomposting for about 10 years, and I've been helping my customers with all sorts of these kinds of questions. What I notice is that most vermicomposters tend to make the same six mistakes. A lot of them make one mistake, but many of them make several. So I created a handy little guide to help you steer clear of some of the most common vermicomposting landmines, and I think you're really going to like so click this little link above my left shoulder and get this guide in just a few short seconds. Thanks everyone. I, I hope this was helpful and I hope it keeps you from purchasing more worms than what you actually need. I'll see you on the next video.